Welcome to Ordinary Things, where ordinary things are explained. Today's ordinary thing, cellars. But what are cellars? In British English, the cellar is a level of a building that is either partially or completely underground, whereas a basement is a room on that level. In the United States, these subtleties are foregone. Cellars are basements, and basements are basements. It's basements all the way down. Throughout history, cellars have traditionally been used as storage space, concealing things like boilers, out-of-season sporting equipment, and secret family members. But where did cellars come from? The short answer is from the ground, and the long answer is this. Humans have been using a version of cellars since the invention of digging, but the cellar didn't truly take room in the private home until the Victorian period. Before, cellars were the reserve of the upper classes, who used them to store perishable foods and their luckier servants. The Victorians were a strange bunch, with stranger hobbies. They enjoyed building railways, using electricity, and subjugating half of the world's population. And the one thing they needed to fuel all these hobbies was coal, and lots of it. A typical middle-class family would burn through over a ton of the black stuff every month. And by 1842, the British were burning through two-thirds of all coal produced in the Western world. The Victorians needed a place to store all this coal, and because their homes were already packed with mercury-poisoned top hats and pictures of dead children, they had to start digging downwards. Any London home that wanted to keep the lights on soon had a cellar, but as London's homes grew deeper, their streets grew harder to navigate. Thanks to all that coal burning, London's streets were soon plagued by thick, often deadly clouds of smog. These noxious, foul-smelling clouds were prevalent in London all the way into the 20th century, and one even successfully ran for mayor in 2008. But the cellar has always been more than a Victorian coal hole, and today there are many different kinds of cellar. Most cellars can be conveniently categorized into good cellars and bad cellars. Good cellars include root, utility, and wine, while bad cellars include dungeons and crypts. Now, there are a few caveats to these categorizations, and that's where things get tricky. For example, a sex dungeon is a type of dungeon that can be good or bad depending on whether you remember how you got there. Wine cellars are usually good, but they are dependent on geography. If you're in France or Italy, then you're safe, but if you're in Australia, then God help you. If you wake up in a cellar and are unsure if it's a good or bad one, there are a few clues to help you. Basement windows are a good sign and are a great place to watch the ankles of the world go by, whereas chains on the wall and old men with giant beards who claim to be the Count of Monte Cristo are generally bad. The world's deepest cellar is the Jinping Underground Laboratory, which is located a staggering 7,900 feet below a mountain in western China, which is the equivalent of 1,100 NBA players stacked on top of each other. Completed in 2010, the laboratory laboratory is the perfect place to do low background neutrino physics research or to become the world champion of hide and seek. The English compound noun cellar door is widely cited as the most beautiful combination of words in the English language. No one knows where this reputation first started, but many speculate that it has something to do with the 1894 hit song I Don't Want to Play in Your Yard, which features these lyrics. You'll be sorry when you see me Sliding down our cellar door. The beauty of the word cellar door increases the further it's divorced from its meaning, as cellar doors themselves are rarely beautiful, scoring an average of 0.25 Kidmans on the objective beauty scale. Another low scoring item is the Pittsburgh Potty, a phenomenon in many Pittsburgh homes where a freestanding toilet, unguarded by walls or other bathroom features, are often found in the basement. Here are some of my favourites. One of the hardest cellars to get into in the world is the Vatican secret archives. The archive contains a gigantic collection of the Vatican's most closely guarded documents, some of which date back to the 8th century. Due to the archive's secret nature, there are many conspiracy theories that it's used to conceal things that could scandalise the Vatican. But if that were true, it would already be filled to the brim with altar boys. Emergency cellars are a type of underground bunker designed to protect inhabitants from dangerous events like tornadoes, nuclear explosions, and the rapture. While there has been no recorded instances of rapture, there is also only anecdotal evidence for the existence of Bigfoot, and he's real because I've seen him. The nuclear fallout shelter had its heyday in the mid-20th century, while Russia and America were engaged in the world's longest, most destructive pissing contest, the Cold War.
The US Department of Energy blew their nuclear loads at a test site in Nevada, just 65 miles north of another uninhabitable crater of misery. Mushroom clouds were clearly visible from the Las Vegas Strip, and they soon became a tourist attraction. It turned out the nuclear bomb was the best thing to happen to Las Vegas since the arrival of organized crime. The Chamber of Commerce printed calendars which detailed detonation times and the best place to watch the explosions. And casinos sold atomic cocktails and hosted a Miss Atomic Energy beauty pageant, the only beauty pageant in history where answering a question with world peace would actually lose you points. But not everyone in Vegas was excited by the airborne dispersal of nuclear fission products. A local millionaire named Jerry B. Henderson was inspired to invest in underground living and built this luxury fallout shelter for himself. It includes a swimming pool, a putting green, and even a nightclub with a bar and dance floor. Henderson liked the house so much that he died in it. And now this marvelous dirt side property can be yours for a low, low, low price of $18 million. This has been Ordinary Things. If you want to know more about Ordinary Things, then please subscribe to the Ordinary Things YouTube channel and click the bell so that the next Ordinary Thing can be delivered straight to your face. Next time on Ordinary Things, the Fedora, also known as the Incel Dandruff Container.